Hey friends, it's nice to see you again. Well, I actually can't see you through the camera, but it's been a long summer, back to doing videos. How do you like the beard, by the way? My wife likes it. If she likes it, I'll grow it. <laughs> hey, one of the things I wanted to do today is talk about the signs of the times. And the reason is because September is very spirit spiritually active. And there's a lot of things on the Jewish calendar, especially the feasts coming up. But not only that, there are so many things that have taken place over even the last week that I want to talk about where we're at on the roadmap of Jesus coming back. What point are we at? Are we at like the last exit? Is it time for us to get off of the road and be raptured? We'll talk about that right now. All right, so let's start with Matthew chapter 24, because this is where the disciples literally asked Jesus, what will be the sign of your return? Jesus promised he's coming back. He said it over and over again. And if he said he's coming back, he's coming back. You know, we thought Arnold was coming back, right, in Terminator, but Jesus is definitely coming back. So let me read Matthew 24 to lay, lay a little groundwork here. In verse 3, it says that in his, he was sitting on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming? And at the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, See to it that no one misleads you. One of the things, the number one sign, number one, and I'm going to stress this, number one, First thing Jesus mentioned is that we will be lied to. Misleading, you know, the Greek word is to be deceived or to be lied to. To be deceived means to be told a lie, but it's presented as truth. This thing right here to me just kind of exploded last week because we have been lied to on a global scale not on a, just a local scale, it is, it is global. You know, we're told, and again, I'm not getting into politics, don't get mad at me, but we're told that we're not in a recession when the book says, the definition of recession says, at least two quarters of a negative GDP equals recession. Well, we're told that's not the definition, they're changing the definition. Uh, inflation is at a record high, highest in 40 years. And it went from, from June to July, it went up. But we were told that, oh, it just went up a little bit. <laughs> Gas prices are still high. They're $1.50 more than they were two years ago. But we're told, oh, they're coming down. You know, be happy, they're low. No, they're not low, they're still high. Food prices, crime is at an all-time level. My point is, the number one is that we're going to be lied to. Listen, we were told, and again, I'm not getting political. You can shut me off if you want. But we were told the vaccine will stop COVID, will keep you from getting COVID. Then after six months or a year that everybody's still getting COVID, we were told that it would lessen the symptoms. So... You know, uh, it's, what is it? Either or. It can't be both. So this lying to is on a massive scale. Number one. Number two, it says, For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will, lead, will mislead many. And you will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened. For those things must take place, but that is not yet the end. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and in various places there will be famines and earthquakes. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pains. So we've had these issues going on, right? You know, we've had earthquakes, uh, we've had wars, we've had, you know, nations against nations. Actually, the Greek word is ethnicities. We've had race wars. Um, so we've had these things. But what makes this and today different than let's say 100 years ago. Why are we saying that there's, a, there's signs, these signs, taken into consideration the signs that are taking place now 
are different. That's what we're going to explain. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of signs. Why, you know, all those things that I just mentioned have already taken place, but why is today a little different? Number one is because Israel is, has been made a nation again. Isaiah 66, and I'm reading it in the Bible, it says that, that the Israel will become a nation in one day. You see, in order for, these, for Jesus to come back, Israel has to become a nation, has to be a nation. Right after Jesus, you know, was crucified, about 40 years later, less than 40 years later, Israel was scattered. Israel, the Roman Empire came and destroyed the temple. Israel was scattered everywhere. So in order for these things to come to pass, it says this generation, the generation that sees certain things shall not pass. So Israel had to become, be a nation for Jesus to come back. That's, that is key. So Israel did become a nation in, in, Mar in I think it's May, well, I have it written down here, May 14th, 1948, G uh, Israel became a nation and it literally became a nation in one day, fulfilling Isaiah 66. And here, if I get to it, let me, let me grab it real quick and read it to you. Isaiah 66. If you have time, you know, sit down, get your Bible, get a notebook, because uh, we're going to discuss a couple of things here. We've got, I got a lot of scriptures. This is real important, okay? Because uh, I'm sounding the alarm. Because if your heart's not right, you may miss the boat. Jesus can come at any moment, and we need to be ready. It's not going to happen. You know, it could happen next year. It could happen in 10 years. It's really up to him. But one of these signs that I'm going to mention, to me, raises the alarm, raises the flag. So here, let me read Isaiah 66 to you, verse 8. It says,